The interior of the cell, support and structure. The next several slides are going to go over different components about the interior of the cell. This one is specifically going to go over the cytoskeletal network that helps support the cell's overall structure. Other organelles of the cell include the cytoplasm, which as we discussed before is the space inside the plasma membrane. Cytoskeletal elements support the organelles uh, protrusions from the cell membrane as well as the cell membrane itself. The nucleus is usually represented as a big round ball in the middle of the cell. This houses your cell's DNA. It also houses an extra dense middle little core called a nucleolus that houses a different type of um, genetic material. Most of this space is where the DNA that you ordinarily think of lives in the cell. Mitochondria typically look like little beans with ridgy stuff on the inside. They help make energy for the cell. Ribosomes are usually represented as little, where do we have one here? Um, oh, here, they're usually represented as little dots and they're all over the place. You can see them through here, the little dots all studying that blue thing. Those will help make proteins in the cell. Rough endoplasmic reticulum and smooth endoplasmic reticulum are continuous with one another. Rough endoplasmic reticulum resides immediately adjacent to the nucleus. In fact, this membrane, this blue membrane that you see, is a continuation of the same membrane that encloses the nucleus. It's studded with ribosomes, and so they call it rough ER because when that membrane is studded with ribosomes, it looks bumpy on in a microscope. This is a membrane that's going to help make proteins because it's so studded with these ribosomes. Smooth endoplasmic reticulum is a continuation of rough endoplasmic reticulum, but it doesn't have all those ribosomes. They're going to help start to package up some, uh, to modify some materials that the rough ER made or that were made in the rough ER and prepare them for export to the Golgi apparatus. The Golgi is shown over here in green. Now remember, this is just a model. In reality, these structures are going to be a lot more closely associated with one another so that they can work together more smoothly. The Golgi apparatus takes things that are made by the rough ER and, and are maybe modified by the smooth ER and prepares them for export. You can see them releasing vesicles to be released into the cell. Peroxisomes and lysosomes are different types of vesicles with enzymes on the inside to do different types of work um, within the cell. We'll talk about that later. And finally, we have appendages of movement. We have cilia, which are long and hair-like. We have flagella. There's only one cell in your body that has a flagellum. That's a tail, and that's on a sperm. And microvilli, which actually aren't really appendages of movement. They don't help the cell move anywhere. But it does increase the cell's surface area so that things can move across its membrane more easily. In this unit, we'll also talk about cell division and cell death. The cytoplasm contains everything or is, in, is encompassed by everything inside the plasma membrane. The liquid part of the cytoplasm is cytosol. The organelles are the functional units of the cell surrounded by cytosol in the cytoplasm. Think of cytosol as liquid and cytoplasm as a space. Each organelle, we've discussed this before, has a specific function. There is not much redundancy between the organelles. Each one has a specific reason for being in the cell it does a unique thing within, within inside of the cell, without which the cell wouldn't be able to survive. Different types of cells will have different types of organelles slightly and in slightly different amounts. For example, um, rough endoplasmic reticulum, or sorry, smooth endoplasmic reticulum, you will find a lot in detoxification organs since it can modify proteins and it can create proteins that can help modify other stuff. 
it's a really um, uh, useful or, uh, organelle for breaking down toxins and secreting stuff that can help break down toxins. So when you have an organ that's whose job is to help detoxify your blood, like the liver, for example, liver cells are going to have a lot of smooth ER. It'll have all the other stuff too, but since that's the liver cell's specialty, they're called hepatocytes, since that's a hepatocyte specialty, it's going to have more of that organelle. Combined, all of these organelles come together to help the cell execute the functions of life. And only when they are assembled in this way so that the cell can consume something to make energy so that it can reproduce itself or reproduce with another of the exact same species, only then can it be considered alive. No individual organelle is alive. Your nucleus is not alive. Your DNA is not alive. Your ribosome is not alive. This can be hard to remember as we move forward with the course because we're always talking about these types of these organelles and molecules as doing things. They're not intentionally doing anything. They have no intent or, or real motivation. They simply do with things that are next to it, whatever is chemically, whatever chemically makes the most sense. It's a spontaneous thing. It's a spontaneous thing. But all these spontaneous reactions accumulate into the context of the cell to create something that takes on the qualities that we consider to be life. The cytoskeleton provides structural support and means for cellular movement. We have microfilaments, microtubules, and intermediate filaments. Microfilaments are basically long strands of actin. Actin is a type of protein. Usually act, um, microfilaments are dual stranded. So you see them as like strings of pearls that, oh, this isn't gonna work very well in one color. So you have strings of pearls kind of that loop around each other. sort of like this. They make a twisting arrangement. These you'll find directly underneath the plasma membrane to help reinforce the plasma membrane, to help make it more rigid, to help keep it open in the shape that it's supposed to be in. It helps aid in motility, cell moving around. It helps form and, and maintain integrity to the vesicles during endocytosis and exocytosis and is a really important molecule in the process of muscle contraction. When we talk about muscle contraction, we're going to just refer to actin filaments. You should remember that those actin filaments are also called microfilaments. Those exact same molecules are found in all kinds of cells all over the body, underneath the plasma membrane, um, and they're just, they're just called microfilaments there. These are the filaments that also help support microvilli. So if you have a cell that has a plasma membrane that looks like this instead of smooth, you've got a lot of surface area, right? You can absorb things very easily. You can endocytose things across a membrane. You have a lot of membranes, so you can do a lot more of that. You can exocytose more things because you have more membrane to do that across. And so you're going to find that since this actin filament supports the plasma membrane, you're also going to see it very abundantly and densely packed relative to the rest of the cell inside those microvilli. Microfilaments help maintain the cell's support, uh, help support the cell and maintain the overall cell structure. Microtubules are the largest of these components. Microfilaments are the smallest, microtubules are the biggest and they're made of proteins called alpha tubulin and beta tubulin. They radiate from organelles called centrioles. In other words, centrioles make these. These are long proteins that come um, together in a barrel shape. So you can see this is an electron microscope rendering of, mic of uh, uh, microtubules. The microtubules are paired, just a couple. Here's a couple, here's a couple, so forth and so on. You can see those, one, two, so forth. Nine, okay? 
They're arranged on the outside of the cell in a nine plus two arrangement. So you have nine pairs, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine pairs of these proteins found at slight angles with respect to one another. So you have these, 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 so forth like that. The lines are exaggerated, but you get the point. And then two more in the middle, nine around the edges plus two in the middle. These are dynamic uh, cytoskeletal architecture. They're constantly being built and constantly being broken down. These are highly changeable structures. And so whenever you see the cell having to change substantially, it has to reach out to get something or it has to extend the plasma membrane a long way. It has to move a flagellum. It has to um, divide and it has to push itself out and grab onto stuff in the process of cell division. All of these really active processes require microtubules. You don't wanna have big fat pieces of architecture lying around your cell when you don't have any use for them. They take up a lot of space. They require a fair bit of energy to maintain. So instead of just keeping them around, you have centrioles, which can make these as needed. And then also they can be broken down. This does require energy. You need to consume ATP to do either of those tasks. So they are energetically expensive. These are going to help determine the cell shape in a very gross, like a large scale kind of way. They can also help anchor organelles. They form the internal structure of cilia and flagella. So microvilli, we mentioned, are really just little finger-like projections in a cell membrane that just help give you more membrane to work with so you can bring things in better or push things out better. Everything happens along a membrane. It's a good way of packing in a lot of membrane across a certain amount of linear space. Cilia and flagella well, the cilia look similar to microvilli, only they're much, much longer. They have this sort of hair-like appearance on a microscope. And they're filled with microtubules that can be built up and broken down. They're attached at the base towards the interior of the cell with a little piece of cellular machinery. I'm not going to get into the mechanics of that right now. That helps turn those microtubules in such a way the cilia can move and the and the flagellum can move they're both extensions of the cell that aid in, in movement the cilia can help move something along the surface of the cell and the flagellum helps actually propel the uh, propel the cell the only cell in our body with a flagellum is the sperm lots of different cells have cilia for example in your upper respiratory tract you have cells that line your upper respiratory tract that are packed with cilia. So you breathe in air, right? That air isn't pure. You have in it dust, pollen, germs, I don't know, break dust if you're out on the street, um, dirt, bits of organic debris from whatever. You've got all kinds of stuff in that air, right? You don't want to breathe in all that stuff all the way down into your lungs. That could be really bad for your lungs. So your body does this nice little trick of lining that surface with cilia and also secreting a lot of mucus onto that surface. Let's draw a person's nose. There's their nostril. There's the upper, <laughs> this is a terrible drawing, upper respiratory tract and here's your cilia. And of course this is exaggerated just so you can see it better. So your upper respiratory tract is going to have all these cilia and it's going to secrete onto the surface mucus. Nasty stuff along with good clean air is going to get breathed in and get stuck in that mucus. The cilia rhythmically beat down in this direction towards the back of your throat. And the cool trick is your upper respiratory cilia all beat towards the very back of your throat. Your lower respiratory cilia from your lungs all beat up back towards your throat and ultimately towards the back, up towards your throat and then, and then towards the back. Stuff that's caught in the mucus can then move down the length as these cilia beat and push it along the length of that passageway. In your neck, the front tube that you can feel is your trachea, your breathing tube, your windpipe. Behind it is your esophagus that goes to your stomach. So when you breathe in 
stuff that your body doesn't want in the lungs, or if you manage to get something in your lungs that your body doesn't want to get all the way down or wants to get rid of, that stuff is going to get entrapped in the mucus secreted on that membrane. The cilia will beat that mucus that's filled with gunk that you don't want up towards the back of your throat. And the back of your throat is continuous with your esophagus, which is continuous with your stomach. So you can take that mucus, push it back to the back of your throat, where it can all go down into your stomach and be digested away. In a sense, your stomach handles a lot of the bad stuff that you breathe in. Here's a really cool um, fluorescent microscopy image of um, these different types uh, of two different types of uh, cytoskeletal elements. So you can see these are, let's take this big cell right here, for example. The edges of the cell, the plasma membrane, underneath it, you can see there's a ton of red, a nice thick band of red. Red is actin. It's sitting immediately underneath the plasma membrane to help support the plasma membrane. The green are microfilaments, or I'm, I, I'm sorry, it should say microtubules. Microtubules. These are protruding out to help push the cell into a specific shape. And you can see over here in particular, they're reaching out and reaching out and engulfing whatever on earth this is. It's just labeled red with actin, so I can't really tell what it is, but it's engulfing that thing. This, um, the microtubules had to be built up to be brought all the way out there. And then once whatever this is is engulfed and has been sufficiently digested that the cell doesn't need to hold on to it with such intensity anymore, then it can start to break down those microtubules to do other work. Intermediate filaments are medium in size. So your microfilaments made of actin are the thinnest. Your microtubules made up of um, alpha and beta particles are, uh, or sorry, alpha and beta tubulin are quite large, relatively speaking, intermediate somewhere in between. These are tough and ropey and of medium diameter. They help to maintain the cell's shape by bearing tension. So whereas microtubules can reach out and stretch the cell out to go do other stuff, the intermediate filaments are more useful in helping the cell resist compression forces or shearing forces. It also helps organize the internal three-dimensional structure of the cell. It can be made by a lot of different substances. We're not going to talk about what they all are. It's very um, various and you find it in a lot of, um, uh, you find it in every cell and it, in a lot of different types of cells it has its own name. In skin, the intermediate filaments are made up of keratin. You might be familiar with keratin already and having heard of it as the waterproofing molecule of your skin. Your body makes a lot of this and it accumulates as your skin cells divide and migrate towards the surface of your body. By the time those cells are completely filled, or sorry, by the time those cells have gotten very close to the surface of your skin, they've been more or less completely filled with keratin intermediate filaments. They help keep the, make sure that those cells keep on like a shingly kind of a shape. They help repel water. And they also um, help increase the durability of your cell overall, of your skin overall. I've touched on these already, but just to recap one more time, um, protrusions from the cell that do work. Cilia are cellular extensions that move things in one direction across the outside of the cell. They're anchored by centrioles and reinforced by microtubules. Remember, these are the types of hairs, and you can see how it has this like shag rug kind of appearance on the surface of the cell how those are going to beat rhythmically in the same direction to move something on its surface in a given direction. How you have mucus that sits on their surface, they beat in one direction, and you can take that mucus that's, that's thick with whatever gunk you breathed in down towards your throat so you can swallow it. Flagella are long and whip-like, reinforced by microtubules also, and they move cell around the body. Only sperm has them. Microvilli 
are fine finger-like projections of the plasma membrane. They don't actually move anything. They're just filled with a bunch of actin to help keep their shape. They're not anchored by anything special. Um, they're filled with um, microfilaments, again, which are made of actin, and their purpose is to increase surface area. Everything happens across surfaces in biology. The more surface area you can pack into a linear space, the more stuff you can do. Microvilli is a very efficient, energy, um, energy conscious way of making it so that your cell can do more stuff with a minimal extra expenditure of energy.